Jerusalem, and it was slowly undermined and destroyed through violence and assassination and everything else. The leader of the counter-revolutionary movement was a, was a guy who was trained, equipped, advised, and backed by the CIA. His name was Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. You never hear about it. Whenever they talk about Saddam Hussein over the last five years, they always start like he was born in, 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 in 2001 or something, you know. Um, so they resist democratization, not only at home, <clears throat> but abroad. <clears throat> well, the capitalist state has... The capitalist state has two core functions. The state that the capitalists have that has two functions. The first is obviously to maintain and advance the interests of capital accumulation, to keep that whole process going. And that's the one we on the left usually focus on. There's another function which nobody seems to talk about much, and that is in fact, it's so untalked about that it's slipped my mind now. No, I remember. <laughs> I remember what it is. That's the function of protecting the capitalist system against the capitalists. Saving capitalism from itself. Because it is a self-devouring beast. It will eat everything in sight, and when there isn't anything else to eat, well, sometimes there may be, but then there's this other juicy thing that it sees the camera, its own tail, and it starts to devour its own tail. I mean, the first one was to, uh, to defend and advance the capital accumulation process, to profit, make sure profits are maintained, investments. And, that's why, you know, when things are in the pits and all that, and the, some of these guys will get up and say, the economy's fine. Yeah, it's fine. They're making record profits. It's, it's hard for them to say, what are you complaining about? I mean, it's working. The system is working. And the question is, I'll get to that later. We should look at that. Working for whom? I always ask that. Um, but um, there's a number of Latin American countries where you had near meltdowns. Brazil, remember that? And, and I think Chile for a while. I mean, the most notably one in the late 90s was Argentina, where the whole thing went. That was a failure of the capitalist state to rein in the capitalists. They will go and they will plunder and they will pillage their own... Uh, if they can make a quick profit, if, you, if, I, could, if I could get the entire money stream that's going into this auto factory and walk away with 80 million dollars, what the hell do I want the auto factory for? What do I care about that? I'm not interested in seeing that you get cars or refrigerators or food or clothing. I'm not in that business. I'm in the business of making a profit. That guy who was head of, um, oh God, I can't remember it now. Right? See, this is called preparation, I forget. Uh, he, I remember he was in front of a Senate committee and he said, um, my corporation is not in the business of making uh, cars, it's in the business of making a profit. And the largest possible profit, it wasn't I, a cocoa, no, largest po possible profit. And that's marvelous. Every so often, truth breaks out in this whole thing, you know, a little glimmer, a, a shard of truth goes flying out into the murky darkness there. Um, Oh, well, Argentina it got so bad, you know what's happened since then. Uh, workers started taking over these factories and businesses and refurbishing them and building them. Said, who needs the bosses? What did the boss ever do if we can just scrape together some capital and this and that? I remember talking to a, um, my friend Horacio, who's an Argentinian. I said, and these bosses are coming back then. Said, no, they haven't finished. They're out. Not true. They're coming back. Right now they're coming back claiming their property rights. Sure, they got a profitable business all over and they want to take it all over again and milk it and plunder it uh, for all it's worth. We saw the same thing happening in the U.S. Charles Keating, he built, he built Lincoln Savings and Loans. He built it of $200 million. You see, that's what it's about. Why bother making refrigerators? 
you got to get the costs, materials, deal with labor, then you got to sell them, hope to make it back, realize your investment, isn't it? When you can just go and steal the money that's in there, you just steal the money. He did, what did he get? Four years in prison, Charles Keating did, for $200 million. I know a lot of people, don't raise your hand, who would do four years, <laughs> who would do four years if they can walk out then with $200 million. I think he had to give back $30 million. They never seem to have... I don't know where I put it all. I mean, here, I can give you back something. John Regis, Adelphia. Ken Lay, Enron. Yeah. And then all these other ones, WorldCom, you can name them all. What were, I mean, Enron was a prosperous, very profitable corporation until, until Lay and his buddy Fastro um, plundered it. They just milked it out, and 5,000 employees are out of a job and out of all their savings that, that they put into this, uh, into this floated up, bloated paper stock, and, and, and Lay walked away with all, with all that money. I mean, that's, that's, I mean that's, that's the magnificent thievery. But the point is, if everybody's behaving that way, the system as a system begins to collapse. So I, as the capitalist government, have to persuade you to not do that, you see. <laughs> Um, but if you've been doing that, you might even go to jail, unless you're vice president of the United States and president of the United States. <laughs> then that insider trading stuff, but of course things are, I, I don't know, I didn't know that. I, yeah, I sold it just two weeks before it collapsed, but that's because I was advised to. I, duh, I don't know that I need about, need about that. And I do think probably that the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is that the Democrats recognize this, um, this second seat. Let's look at the things they do the best. They produce commodities. He said, I bought, in the last few months, I bought two DVD players, both of which broke. Couldn't get anything. The warranty wasn't respected or given any regard. There's no customer service in most of these companies. Um, we tried to hire or rent something and something else happened, the wrong thing came and uh, he, he keeps talking about these utter, utter nightmare things that while they may happen to us once in a while, were happening to him all the time. He said, Indonesia is a totally dysfunctional society. The water, he said, the water has been privatized uh, and most of the water that people drink is terrible in its quality. He said, the air is terrible. He said they have abolished all public health services, pretty much. Um, and he said, all that happens is that Indonesians don't live as long as people in other places. They have a low, um, low rate. The rich in Indonesia, oh, the rich live very well. They have sumptuous places. They have the best of everything. Most of it flown in and imported. They have regiments of servants and workers and assistants who they pay practically nothing, some of whom are working for a bowl of gruel a day or whatever, or as I said, 18 or 14 cents an hour, I think it's down to 12 cents an hour. They want to really do nothing. Um, he says, rampant crime, terrible poverty, chaotic auto traffic, no environmental protections, that's terrible. So there, that's the model. That is the success. That's the success they're looking for. Remember that. So capitalism makes a claim not only to democracy, but also to prosperity. But that's not true, as I've just been saying. The goal is private wealth for the few and public poverty for the many. To the extent that there is prosperity, it's because of, as Debs thought of it in prison. It's because of our struggle to create a minimum wage law, child labor law, social security, better wages and such, and, and, and there we are. But their goal is the opposite. It's really to create poverty because the poorer and hungrier you are, the harder you will work for less. I mean, why is it you won't work for 18 cents an hour or 14 cents an hour the way the Indonesians do? Is it because we Americans are just so much more self-respecting? We wouldn't consider it? No, it's because we're at a stage of historical struggle where we don't have to 
But that goal is to get us back to 1900, because in 1900 we did, we did work for pennies an hour. We did have, we worked, the U.S. half a century...